I've always been a little bit confused why some oils work better than others for seasoning carbon steel and cast iron. So I went and asked a doctor of polymer science. So I'm gonna introduce you to Dr. Zach Hudson. So Zach is a professor at the University of British Columbia. He is a polymer scientist, and he is just an all around awesome guy. So there is a link to his YouTube video that he was asked by a lot of his students to post to the internet about why the future needs chemists and uh, why chemistry is so critical to our future and to the chemistry of seasoning pans and why that's important to our future also uh, from my perspective. I hope you enjoy this. I've tried to make this as brief as possible and I'll see you on the other side. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Zach Hudson. I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of British Columbia and the Canada Research Chair in Sustainable Chemistry. When you're buying a nonstick pan, what you're buying is a hard surface coated in an organic substance. And when you're buying a Teflon pan, that pan is, you know, generally metal, aluminum or steel or whatever, um, coated in a polyfluorinated organic compound. So if it's coated in Teflon, that's going to be uh, PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene, also known as Teflon. And um, I believe they also generally contain uh, perfluoro organic acids, like perfluorooctanoic acid. You've probably heard of PFOA. Um, I think they contain these sorts of things. So Teflon is a, a really um, remarkable material because almost nothing sticks to it. Um, it has very low surface energy. So that's why they work so well the day you pick them up off the shelf, almost nothing sticks to Teflon. But it is an organic coating. And so when you're heating it to high temperatures and scraping against it, that abrasiveness is going to over time wreck that coating. So the instructions on a Teflon pan, which nobody listens to perfectly, is don't use high heat and don't use metal. Uh, because what you're doing, if you do those things, is you're actually scraping off the Teflon. Um, but even kind of medium high heat, medium heat, and abrasion with a wooden spoon and so on, over time causes wear. So like a good example is even a rock that water washes over in the ocean will wear down because of the water. And the rock is much harder than water. So this is going to be true of a silicone coated ceramic or a Teflon coated metal pan. Uh, there is an organic coating, you are going to wear it down. So I would say the punchline of this video, if I could think of one kind of take home message is that if you want a nonstick pan that's going to last, you need a nonstick coating that you can um, regenerate. So that would be like, if there's one sentence that's going to describe the importance of the video, it's that. So you're not going to, you know, go buy a, a, t a tank of perfluoro tetrafluoroethylene and like spray it with industrial catalyst in your house, right? It's super toxic and reactive and you're not gonna do that. Te Teflon is not, but the monomer is. Um, so really, if we're gonna be doing that in our house, we need something that's inexpensive, good for the planet and non-toxic for the user. This leads us to, to compounds like fats and oils and so on, which people can use safely and comfortably. We talked a little bit about uh, saturated versus unsaturated fats. And my understanding is that um, an unsaturated fats, so these are typically oils, are going to work better because they have more carbon-carbon um, double bonds. So a carbon-carbon double bond uh, gives you a reactive site that can bond to the iron when it's heated. So if you just have um, a saturated fat, this, this has lots of carbon hydrogen bonds and do not have very many reactive sites, if any, um, that can react with your iron when you heat it up. But an unsaturated fat, these carbon-carbon double bonds are gonna provide reactive sites. So if you on Google images, look up the structure of you know, linoleic acid or whatever, you'll see that there are these double bonds, which are signified by two lines connecting two of the carbon atoms. And those are points at which um, the oil can react. It's also, once that reaction happens, um, that chemical functionality, a carbon-carbon double bond, can initiate a polymerization. 
So a polymerization is the same reaction happening over and over and over and over again with an additional molecule. So this is how you form your coating. So what would happen is you would start heat up the iron, those electrons on the iron become reactive, snap on to one of those carbon-carbon double bonds, and that releases an electron on the uh, fat to react with another molecule of fat. So that reaction will happen again and again and again and again and again until you get your nice coating of oil. Um, and chemically, that's gonna give you a very similar structure to a synthetic coating. So you've got this kind of brushy polymer structure uh, formed from nonpolar fats and oils on your surface. And the beauty of this method is that when you scrape it, wear it down, heat it up, use and abuse it, um, you can regenerate it with something that you have in your cupboard that's safe and inexpensive and not difficult to do. So this is why, um, you know, you can use your great grandmother's cast iron pan because it's just iron metal that you treat well and, and season and it'll last forever. Um, so to the third question that you asked about which oil, this one's a little trickier, but based on um, my understanding, you want to use probably a uh, oil with low fiber content with a high smoke point. So um, the fiber content in the oil, so if it has, um, uh, you know, for example, little bits of plant matter in there is not going to do anything to the coating. It's just going to burn. So that's going to make your, your coating more like sort of tar uh, darker, might add sort of a burnt flavor the first time you cook with it. And um, the second thing is if there are lots of flavors in the oil, so it's not a neutral oil, people who cook with lots of different oils will know that the difference between a neutral flavored oil and something like olive oil that has a very distinct taste. Um, flavored oils have additional compounds in them that create that flavor that are not used to create the coating. So what you want is something that is really um, just quite simply the oil you need for the polymerization without a lot of extras. So uh, this is not a purely scientific comment, but my understanding would be that something like, you know, canola oil, grapeseed oil, something like that would be likely to work better than something like olive oil that has a lot of extra ingredients. Maybe, I think that um, because you can, you can get a lot of high fiber foods from seeds too, depending on how much of the seed husk you keep with the, um, the germ, right? Mm. So uh, I think that's a reasonable guess, but it probably also depends on how it's refined. Yeah, okay, great question. So the best choice for the planet is going to be something that you can use sustainably without replacing for a very, very long time. So that's going to be something like cast iron that you reseason every once in a while, um, that when the coating that you create um, is subject to that abrasiveness and wears off, it's going to be harmless in the environment. It's just food, right? So you can compare and contrast this with the Teflon pan where that coating will wear off. And you'll have to throw the thing out like it won't it'll just stop working and you'll have to replace it yeah. and so of course that takes mining and energy and so on to create a whole millions of new pans for the population of the world um, but the other important thing is that that coating that teflon that you wear off in little tiny bits and pieces when you chip away at it does not break down in the environment ever when you chip away at it does not break down in the environment ever So you're going to create basically microplastic fluoropolymer in the, you know, probably the, you wash down your sink. So it's going to go in your waterway. Um, okay. And the effects of microplastic pollution are becoming increasingly better understood. And specifically the effects of like fluoropolymer, um, it's not particularly reactive, but it's also not something your body can metabolize. So it's just going to accumulate in fish and accumulate in birds and, and so on. And uh, the long-term effects of that are certainly not going to be positive. So uh, I would say the most sustainable choice for the planet would be uh, probably a, a cast iron pan or similar material that you can reseason um, whenever you need to. Um, and the reason why we have a problem in this industry is that the most convenient choice for the consumer is to throw it away and buy a new one because, you know, very often, um, depending on the quality of pan you get, you can get cheap uh, Teflon coated pans. And so what most people do is they just buy one and they say, well, this is trash. A few years later, throw it out, buy a new one. And so this causes 
ways to accumulate. But I think um, uh, I actually don't know how the prices compare, but even if, you know, a good quality cast iron pan were more expensive than a cheaper Teflon one, um, you'll never have to replace it. So if, if you were to, for example, spend, I don't know what it is, 50 bucks to buy a nice one versus 20 bucks to buy a cheap Teflon pan. And you say, wow, this is more expensive. Like, yes, but you'll replace the cheap one every five years. And you might have generations of people that will never replace the cast iron. So, that, you know, that 30 bu- or that extra 30 bucks that you were to spend now might be money that, you know, your great grandchildren never have to spend if they hand it down. So uh, realistically, the, the best choice for the consumer that can think not even really long term, just medium term would be a, a cast iron pan that you season yourself. You know, it's become absolutely clear to me that there isn't ever going to be a nonstick surface that is going to have longevity like a cast iron or carbon steel or stainless steel pan. It just is never going to happen. And, you know, I may be proved wrong at some point in time in 100 years from now, if, when that comes. But for right now, what we know is that the only way to be responsible to our planet going forward is to buy carbon steel cast iron, enameled cast iron, or stainless steel. Those are the only materials that have longevity. Those are the only pans that you're gonna hand down to the next generation. And that's important because we should not buy cookware ever knowing that it's going to wear out and at some point in time, we're gonna be replacing it. That is old thinking. We used to think that way. I used to think that way. I've sold thinking that way. That's no more. We shouldn't, we won't. All retailers really should just stop and everyone can buy a lifelong pan and use it successfully. There's no reason not to. Thanks so much to Dr. Hudson for his time. I hope that's really clear to everybody of why unsaturated fats work well, why not having fiber in your oil works so incredibly well, and why a saturated fat just won't ever bond as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.